Call the meeting to order. Um, we will be taking roll call votes because we have one of our members uh, of the select board geographically indisposed um, and not able to be here. So I'll, I'll uh, per Mass General Law, we will be taking all votes uh, via roll call. Um, minutes from November 28th, did you guys have a chance to look at them? I did. I thought they were fine. Yeah, the fine. Motion. I make motion to approve minutes of November 28, 2018. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me. Aye. Comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. No? Sergeant? You're a member of the public. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Um, okay. Appointments. Chief Savini is here to talk about what's going on in the Whitley Police Department. Yes. I have three topics. Um, I can go through it fairly quickly. I don't need to take up too much of your time. Um, the first one is um, just raising the discussion about uh, the detail rate. We haven't discussed the detail rate. We haven't had any uh, increases in the detail rate since March of 2017. Um, we are <clears throat> down towards the lower half of the average. Um, our detail rate is $45 an hour. Most departments are now looking at, at their rates. This is kind of the same time everybody's looking at them. Um, I have a list here of one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve local departments and their rates. Um, so essentially what I'm looking for, I can give this to you guys so you can have it on, on record. Um, first off, just looking to raise it from 45 to 50. Um, the average on this sheet, if you average it out, it's about $49 an hour um, for, for all of them. Some of them are higher, like Amherst is 52, almost $53 an hour. Uh, most other departments are 50, with a few of them that, at 45. <clears throat> um, so that's the first thing, just looking to increase the, the rate to, from $45 to $50 per hour um, for police details. And the second part of that, if you will, um, the state police are at $50 an hour. What some departments are doing, and I've, I've looked into it a little bit, and it seems to make sense to me, uh, what some departments do is they keep their rate consistent with what the state police rate is. Um, so if the state police go up to $52 an hour six months from now, then we would go up to $62 or $52 an hour uh, six months from now. Um, from my perspective, it would save time having to reach out to all the departments, get a list of detail rates to see what everybody's rates are at, come to you guys asking to, to raise the rate um, again. So if it's on an annual basis, I don't think their rate's gone up. Um, since we had our rate, I think they were at $50 an hour and we had our rate at 45. Um, so that's kind of the part two of that. So one would be to raise the rate equivalent to what the state police are at now. And then two, to just stay consistent with their rate um, that whatever, whatever that rate is, we would go up um, as they go up. So I'm not sure if you have questions or opinions on it. Last time we March 2017. Right, so it's not that long ago, it's a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Can I see your list? Sure. And, and this is details that, you know, people like Comcast or Verizon pay. Correct. This is not yeah, our, any, any police, special police detail, traffic detail. This is not our hourly rate. Correct. Yep. This isn't paid by the town. The town gets the 10% administrative charge, so whatever the rate is, they get 10% of that. My only concern with this is, and I have the same issue with, with any comparative average, is that every time someone raises their rates to above the average, it's a self-perpetuating increase. I mean, it's just the, you're, you're, you're setting yourself for, for, up for an increase time and time again. And I get things get more expensive and people need raises, but we also have to look at ability to pay, and I don't know what Comcast or Verizon's ability to pay is. I don't know what 
who, who else needs details, but mm -hmm. just looking at raising it because everyone else does just doesn't seem like it's a fiscally responsible approach, even though I get it, it's not our, it's not our money. Mm -hmm. um, but 50 bucks an hour is a pretty good hourly rate. I, I don't know, I just, I, that's my concern, but. Does this have to go by the personnel committee? <clears throat> I don't know that it no. is. Is there not whether it's the personnel committee or not? Okay, then not, okay, you know. And it's just minimum four hours when you Correct. go out, right? Yep, when we're called out. Four hour increments, so five hours is Correct. eight hours then? Yep. Just a, uh, a real quick question. You said that uh, there's a 10% administrative charge uh, that the town gets. Is that uh, in addition to the hourly rate? So yes. So the people who are paying are actually paying, if it were to go to $50 an hour, they're actually paying 55 Correct. Because of the administrative fee, okay. processing fee, all, all that stuff. Okay. So it wasn't 50 minus the $5 and the, the officer gets 45 and the town gets 5 It's $5 on top of the $50 that the other yeah, the, the $50 rate okay. would be the officer's hourly hourly rate. Yeah. Okay. And how many hours is, do you do detail? Are I'm you, sorry? How many hours is, do you do, do your officers do detail work? Say over a year, how many? Is it four hours every month, eight hours a month? What, uh, what it depends, say? it depends on the project that's going on. Um, I mean, it, it, could, it varies. Sometimes we get a tree crew that comes through and we're do, doing four officers a day, three, four officers a day. Sometimes it's, it's just work with, you know, Eversource or Comcast or something like that. Um, a lot of road, road stuff for repairing the bridges and highways when that stuff comes up. So it's, it's hard to, I, I didn't average out what, what we have, but um, well, but what we yeah, currently have out, outstanding right now. If someone were to do an additional 20 hours a week, and I'm not saying they, I don't, I don't know whether that's realistic or not, on top of their full time gig, mm -hmm. it's pretty good money. Yeah. Yeah, that's where a lot of officers make their, make their living doing it. Yeah. And, and this is taxable income. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think given we have so many part-time officers that we probably are not paying fifty dollars an hour to, um, that you know, it, it might make it so people can stay in our employ um, and still kind of make enough to uh, you know to get by and uh, you know to, to really you know, be able to stay in our communities. So I, I don't have any objection to what uh, Jim has proposed. So, but we don't know how many hours this is? I mean, we, you have no idea? Uh, well, we currently, I just submitted five, five detailed bills within the last week, and um, if I were to guess, I don't know if you know off the top of your head for hours that we've submitted, um, but with the five that we had, that's Possibly 50, 60 hours worth of details over the last over the last that I just submitted. Yeah, but that's a, a month. The majority of those details are out of town. Yeah, so we have that, very little details in, in the town. town of Waitley. Okay, our guys are going outside of Waitley to get work. But, but, then, would, but then that rate would be in the town that they're in, correct? Correct. correct. Yeah, which a lot of times is at the higher rate. Right. Like Fifty dollar. Right. We just don't have that much going on in Waitley. Yeah. I mean, you know. I, I mean, I, I'm just kind of curious. I, I don't, it's fine. So but what, what was the rate before when we went to 45? Was that the average back then? Or were we low then, a year and a half ago? We, what was that? Every, well, usually every time I come in, we're, we're usually low because it it takes a while for us uh -huh. to, to okay. get caught up to time. So that's, that's why I was suggesting the state police. State police don't, they don't go up annually. It, it may be two or three years before before they go up, but it's, it's usually a fair, it's a fair rate. You know, we're not looking to just keep getting more and more and more and let's get up to 55, let's get up to $60 an hour. You know, state police, we could have one of our guys on one end of the detail 
at $45 an hour with a state trooper at the other end of the detail getting 50 for the same yeah, the same job. So yeah, that's I have actually no problem with, with going along with the state police. It's fine. I, I'm just kind of kind of curious. Do what happens if the town of Waitley needs a detail? They call us, whoever it is. For and then we pay this. If the town of Waitley. Oh, if the town of Waitley? Yeah. The town of Waitley, we, we get the, the rate for the town of Waitley is the overtime rate for um, our full time officer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's not tied to this. It's not. It's not tied. No. To, it's a detail, even though yeah, it's a we don't charge the town $45 an hour for doing work on our own roads. Okay. But is this something we can okay. vote on, or do we need to put it on the agenda? Um, is there a big rush for this to get voted on tonight? Okay. No, I just want to. We could put it on the next agenda. Yeah, I just want, I, I mean, I don't care. I just want to, yeah. you know me, I'm a stickler for the book. Stickler for the rules. <laughs> this would start in January yeah. then or whenever we approve it. Whenever you vote, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, let's put it on the agenda. So that was the that was the first topic. Second topic, um, my apologies to Joyce. I didn't get this emailed out to you. This is just a summary. I'll go through it, but it's a summary of uh, what we've done last year as far as community outreach things. Uh, but I'll go through them. They're more just uh, a quick a quick outline of it. So it starts. Starts back in March 2018. Um, we had a class with the Grange, met with the Grange, did an identity theft, identity theft scam class with them um, just to update them, give them information as to how to how to proceed if, if somebody does contact them and attempts to scam them or their identity gets compromised as to how they can how they can deal with it. Uh, so we conducted two regional Rad Women Safety and Awareness classes. Um, those classes were, were done in conjunction with Deerfield and Conway. Uh, one of them was done at the Frontier Regional School. The other one was a community, community event um, that women signed up for, participated in the class. Um, that's it's been an ongoing thing. We, we usually do that. On a regular basis. So we assisted, helped organize the Senior Center Triad Picnic and Spaghetti Supper. <clears throat> so we participated in those. Waitley Elementary School had a safety day at the end of the school year last year. So Fire EMS, Waitley Police Department participated in that safety day. We had our cruiser there with a bunch of our equipment laid out. Kids came through and um, looked at the cruiser, went through, asked questions, looked at our equipment, things like that. Just kind of set up in station so kids got a, a lot out of that. Good opportunity to deal with every everyone in the school for that event. Uh, we also, I also had meetings with the Whaley Global Leaders, Whaley Elementary School's Global Leaders. They have a, a class that meets and they, they do community community events. They did one last year where they they uh, collected stuffed animals and they donated them to the to the police department. Um, when they donated them to the police department, they came to the police department. We had a tour of the police department. Again, they asked questions, showed them our, our equipment, uh, took some pictures, things like that. We're participating in the Northwestern District Attorney's Office Blanket for Kids program. They took donations of blankets. Uh, people made blankets. They took donations of blankets. And uh, if there's a um, traumatic incident, a violent violent encounter or uh, drug drug situation, something like that, that's traumatic for the children. We have the blankets in the cars. We can we can give. Uh, small children to help them feel a little bit more comfortable. So that kind of goes in conjunction with the, uh, with the stuffed animals. So 
we can give them an animal, stuffed animal, and a, and a blanket. It's really helpful for the kids. We do it at crashes. If there's kids in a, involved in a crash, they're usually pretty pretty worked up, pretty pretty scared. So giving them a, a stuffed animal or a blanket is really helpful to them. So participating in that. Um, we currently have the Sanford Seniors going on. Seniors can sign up, senior citizens can sign up at the um, Senior Center and get their name on the list. <clears throat> they want to have sand salt delivered to their house. Helps keep their sidewalks clear so they can get in and out of the house and emergency services and get in if we, if we need to, uh, to respond to, to the area. So this is the second year that that's been going on. And that's think, only if they go to the Senior Center. Correct. They, they go to the, well, they don't have to go to the senior center on a regular basis. They just go to the senior center to sign up for it. They can call the senior center or go there and sign but up. My for guess it. is the outreach coordinator can also sign them up in their homes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All they have to do is for call. For people who just can't get to the senior yeah. center. Yeah. Yeah. Just a phone call and they'll get them signed up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, it's not a problem. Is this on channel 15? I wasn't aware of this. Local access stuff. Okay. Why? The San for Seniors thing? What do they want? Oh, in terms of publicizing it. Yeah. I'm actually meeting with a um, representative from the Senior Center tomorrow to get something to put on there, okay. put on our website. I put notice on our website, um, but I want to get something official from the, you know, the official notice that we can get on Channel 15 as well. So we'll get that out there on uh, all the platforms that we can. Is it, on the, is it on your Facebook page as well or no? It is. It is? Yep. I know there's a lot of people that watch the, uh, the channel 15, so we'll, we'll get it on there as well. <clears throat> it may be worth a, a call to the recorder as well. I mean, every, every yeah. senior in the senior center reads the recorder yeah. on a regular basis, or I think it's happening both, they would both. Yeah. But it's just another way to get that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I can't remember if something went out because it, it's. The triad, the senior center, we're also working with the DA's office, so it's kind of a joint effort. I'm not sure if something went out through the I mean, DA's office, but we can... It's easy to do. Yeah, we can certainly, okay. certainly reach out to them as well. Um, well, you could do a scuba article next one that comes out. All right, Joyce? Well, that'll be March. Yeah. Okay, March, okay, late. we're too late. A little, little late, but okay. Pick up the extra seat. It snows in March. Yeah. <laughs> it's snowing in June at this rate. Oh, I see. Um, it's still snow. Okay. So I, I had a, a request from the, actually the Whitley Grange um, had some questions about marijuana. The marijuana topics coming up as far as recreational facilities, medical facilities, cultivating it, and what you why you why you use it the medical purposes of it so there's a lot of questions out there so we're in the process of kind of setting up a public discussion um, just to inform people give people more information as to what's potentially coming to town and um, pros and cons things like that so answer any questions that people might have so we're in the process of setting that up who's actually doing that i'm sorry who's actually going to be doing that it would be me yeah okay. the police department most likely me, Don will probably be there as well, because they usually have their meetings at night, so during the week. So. <clears throat> but that would be at a Grange meeting, you're saying? Correct. Yep. Anyway. But the last one we did with the with the uh, identity theft, that was open. We posted on our website. They were welcoming anybody that wanted to come in. So it was just the platform that we used as the as the Grange meeting, setting a date, and time, um, a location for it. But it would certainly be open to anybody that wanted to wanted to come to it, so they don't have to be a member of the Grange to, to go to it. Yeah, more of a public public forum. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. So we currently have a food drive going on. We're working with the elementary school, the fourth grade classroom. Um, they've taken the um, initiative to come forward and set up this food drive. We're participating with them. 
the deadline is the 18th to have all the food delivered to either the police station or the uh, Waitley Elementary School on the 20th, so next Thursday. Uh, we're going to be delivering, we're going to be putting it all in the, the uh, police cruisers and delivering it down to the uh, food bank. So. so if any residents of town who, you know, not connected with the fourth grade wanted to help the fourth grade, how would they do that? They, well, it's, it's not so much helping the fourth grade and getting food, the food the they can get grade. it to us, they can drop it off at the school. We've got, we've got information on the, the website about that as well. Uh, the Facebook page about that as well. People want to donate. We've got a couple of bags of, of stuff uh, at the station right now. I know the school's got a, a bunch of stuff there. People have been dropping stuff off at the schools. So either the, the school or dropping it off at the, the police station or if they wanted to call call us, we could, we could come pick it up if they didn't want to make the trip down. So certainly take advantage of any opportunity we can to get as much as much we can. Right? It's, it's correct. anyone who wants to help. Yeah, it's a community community wide thing. To, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we're just working with the, the fourth grade class in particular because they're the ones that yep. that have uh, cool. kind of spearheaded it. So, so, so can, that's yeah. Can people bring food without? Is there a place to drop off without going inside the station? Is there a sign or a bucket or something outside so people just come and leave it without going in if you're not there? It would be in the lobby of the police station, which is open. Okay. So they can't get into the police station, but they oh. can. Come into the lobby. the lobby and drop it off. Okay. It, we have a where the, the stuff is now in the corner. It's we have our um, our d drug disposal kiosk in the in the corner there. So if they wanted to drop off medication prescriptions that they're not using, they can drop those off there too. Needle the needle box is there, so they can you know anybody can get into the lobby to, to leave whatever they need to there. So. Um, so some other <clears throat> upcoming things that were that aren't planned out yet but are on the agenda to be planned and um, moving forward we're working on a public CPR class so CPR class that we can do in-house at, at the police station invite members of the public there it's obviously going to be limited seating if we get 25 people that want to sign up we may do something here or we may have to set up a couple of different classes but um, we've gotten a lot of requests for uh, for a CPR class as well. So we're going to be setting that up. Um, I've got a list of names for people that want to sign up for a basic firearm safety class. Working on setting up a, a reading program at the elementary school. Again, it's in the kind of the beginning stages. I got to meet with the, the principal, um, talk with her about it, see how we can kind of organize it and set it all up. But kind of like a cops um, for kids. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. I believe they have a reading program at the school. I mean, what do you mean by a reading program? So, well, it's going to be more for like we don't really know the name. I, I put on here something like cops for kids or something like that. So, so I would go in or one of our officers would go in. You know, once a week, once a month, oh, read, oh, read, read oh, to the, yeah. the reading. Yeah, we would come in and, and just, yeah. to, just to build a relationship with the kids so they get to see us in a different environment as opposed to uh, just while we're there for lockdown drills or visiting, we right. could actually yeah. um, story time reading with them. Story time, right? Story, story time yeah. with the kids. Right. They'll, yeah. they'll practice how to make sure that they don't have any challenging words at the same front. Correct, yeah. yeah. We can we can only do Dr. Seuss books. Yes, read, read the books first. Those aren't easy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've done it before. One fish, two fish is just brutal. <laughs> there, there's some tongue twisters. But we've done it in the past before um, with some of the classes, but kind of looking at making it more of a formal a formal thing, something they can look forward to where they know we're going to be coming in on a specific day. So. We'll be working on that as well. We've got another safety day coming up, probably going to be at the end of the school year. Um, something similar, where we're looking to add add new things, hoping to make this an annual annual event. So, should be doing some new things with that. But we'll be working with the fire department and EMS to to set that up. And um, this is something I just I'll throw it out there, but I kind of kind of bounce it around in my head as to whether or not, because a lot of times people have, have questions and 
they'll see us in passing or whatever, but the possibility of setting up some sort of monthly or quarterly meeting at just a public discussion at the police station for people to come and just ask whatever questions they want, whether it's something about a new law, whether it's about things that have been going on, whatever it might be. Um, I don't know how, how effective it would be, but I'm just kind of throwing that out. Why not try it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, if, if, if after two years of the things, no one shows up, you're like, all right, we tried. Yeah. But I think it's a great idea. I love yeah. it. Because, you know, if you have the specific, specific topics, like a, a marijuana class, you know, people may want to ask other stuff. So right. I think it would be a good opportunity to just open up the open it up to whatever whatever people want to ask. If they want to submit questions ahead of time because they don't want to ask them publicly. I get FCAT there, maybe. I mean, yeah, who knows? Yeah. I mean, they may, I mean, they may not want, not want FCAT. I'm just mm -hmm. publicizing these things. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's what uh, this we have for public public programs that have been going on and some things that we've got planned for for moving forward. Do so, you have any questions or anything else I can just touch quickly on the last thing and then I'll be out of the uh, out of the way. What, what's happening with uh, marijuana training from the say safety point of view for you or your officers is is are you developing that? Is the state doing it? Or are you going somewhere? How, how is that going to happen? Safety training in what sense? I mean, we how to recognize it and whether it's OD'd or yeah. or we've always legal, had it. what's we, legal, what isn't, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've we've always had it. Laws have changed, so I mean, obviously, we have in service. We've done meetings at our police station um, with with the officers as as things have changed. When medical marijuana came up, we had we had training when recreational stuff comes up we we have training anytime a, a new law changes we're always we have monthly meetings so we're always discussing this stuff at, at our meetings um, we've always done OUI operating under the influence of alcohol and we've also had for years we've had training on operating under the influence of other stuff inhalants um, prescription drugs illegal drugs we've, we've always had that training uh, what's what's coming up what's the big topic as far as marijuana goes is proving that somebody's impaired. So it's, it's easy to do that with alcohol because we have a test. We have a breathalyzer test that says if you're 0.08 or above, you're above the legal limit, then we can take action. Um, there's no, currently no test for that for, for marijuana. And because it's becoming popular, the courts are looking at it more stringent. They want more from us. They don't want us to just say, well, it smelled like it and the guy was driving all over the road. So they, they're asking more from us. So, Part of our field sobriety tests are, are tests that we can do to um, determine whether or not somebody's impaired. Um, and there is no breathalyzer. The state police are kind of piloting a program where they, they take a swab of your mouth and it says whether or not there's THC in your system. It doesn't say how long it's been there. It doesn't say, it doesn't quantify and say how much is, is actually there. There's no limit for the state that says this blood level is. Tough to hold up in court. Absolutely, and this is, this is going to continue to 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 evolve as as time goes on. Who's as we see more the cannabis control commission on this, because I mean, obviously, this stuff is hugely popular right now. Oh, I mean, absolutely. The, the guy who was here two weeks ago who was saying, "Oh yeah, sales are slowing down." Seven million dollars. <laughs> That's slow. At each shop since the beginning, of course, since the middle of November. Okay. <laughs> This it's not slowing down. This is this is a big thing as far as as far as the state goes. At our municipal police training committee level, at the Mass Mass Chiefs Association level, we have um, we have representatives that sit on executive boards that meet with the governor, and these and to you. these discussions are going on daily, weekly. It's a huge issue. Oh, absolutely, it's a huge issue, and it's a huge issue. There's also communication going on with the courts as well. Because like I said, judges are, are getting more strict about this stuff. So if we have drug recognition experts. We don't have any on our department. It's a, it's a very uh, intensive program that officers have to go to. They ship them out to Arizona to, to do the training for two weeks. Um, so there are some in the area. Regionally, we have a few that we can call. Um, judges are even getting tough on them. You know, they're experts. They have a whole other set of tests. They take your blood pressure, they measure your pupils, they take your heart rate, they take your temperature. They do all kinds of analysis, and the, the courts are being even more strict with them and not recognizing some of them as well. So um, it's, it's a big issue. It's, it's on the, the front burner 
for everybody involved, the courts, the police. The, you know, everybody's looking at this, trying to figure out a way to do it. Uh, obviously, it's gonna come down to funding. And if they do come up with something, like the breathalyzer machine that we have at our police station, that's $10,000. So if they do come up with something that we can that we can use, it's it's probably going to be a cost associated with it. Is the state going to pay for it? Is the town's going to be responsible for for getting the equipment? So there's a lot of factors that are that are coming into play with this. It's, and it's again, it's not new. We've never had to we've never had to do it in the past. But now that it's legal, and more people will have the potential of you know, being out there driving after they've they've used. Um, which isn't in itself illegal. It's Correct. Like, again, it's like having a beer. Yeah. 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 If you're if you're driving straight and you're not impaired, you know, right. that's that's what we look at. Somebody that's impaired by their driving. So um, it, it does remind me though that when we do get the host community agreements in place, um, it'll be important for you to be involved with the education component of this with the schools. Absolutely really important mm -hmm. and so in a friendly kind of in a friendly kind of way because that oh, yeah. that education piece is going to be really important yep. and, and I'm, I'm thinking of it even separate from what their what they may do from whatever business it is what they may do we're going to kind of take on ourselves to do something separate than that um, oh yeah no it'll be initiated by us it's not initiated yeah. by the yeah by the by the company yep. We, we drive this, that's why they're gonna give us money to drive it. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So we requested, not as a to the, we requested a $10,000 donation each year um, for educational programming that would fund programs in the schools. From each company? So, okay, okay. that's business thing. Wait, wait. 5,000 from Murphy Grove and 10,000 10, from? Uh, for dispensary. The dispensary, so. Okay. Great. Yeah. So other, other than the helpful. education part, are you or officers going to be involved in details for these establishments? Has that been discussed? Or, or I, I did have a discussion with um, one facility that has a, the host agreement um, with you guys currently. I had a meeting with them the other day. Um, some of those topics were discussed as, as far as opening, seeing you know the, the traffic issues and the concerns that people had the public concerns that people had in Wester and, and in Northampton. Um, I've already kind of put them on notice that uh, we will be involved. We will, you know, if, if something comes in, once it's opened, we don't know what's gonna happen. So we will be there to, to monitor traffic and, and monitor the, you know, the activities as to what's going on. You know, it's hard to anticipate what could happen. I don't, I don't think Northampton anticipated that they'd have lines going down the streets of their their communities uh, if they didn't anticipate it they should <laughs> they, they anticipated some definitely some increased traffic but at the level that it was i don't know that anybody could have but it's been very that. civil i mean there haven't been any issues that i that i know of it just people, yeah it's, it's like when fitz willie's opened there was a line out the door yeah. and around the corner yeah and i've, I've heard i've bell heard of some nuisance what's that when taco bell opened in northampton <laughs> now there are. Now there's no line. Is there a requirement it's, for a police it's... presence inside the building? No. There's no requirement. Nope. They have they have their own staff, no their own security, security but no. inside there. And, and we we've, we've discussed their security plan. We've discussed the process of how somebody goes in and how they obtain. And it's it's a pretty in depth process. I'm I'm impressed with uh, with how it's how it's looking so far for the the one we have a, a host agreement with currently. You know, from what they presented, it's, it's, it's a pretty impressive uh, security plan that they have. It's well above and beyond what the state requires. So. Okay. <clears throat> All right, anything else? Uh, no, the only, well actually, yeah, the only other thing I was gonna mention was just the, um, coming up at the, year, at the end of the year, we're gonna be doing our you know, obviously the budget and <clears throat> town reports. Um, we, we're, we've been up and running with our new record management system, the new regional system. Um, so I have some better figures as far as numbers, number of calls for service that we have. Um, we're currently standing around 4,000 as far as calls for service. That includes anything that we do as a, as a police officer that requires 
a police response. That could be checking buildings, responding to alarm calls, medical calls, fire calls, anything that a police officer responds to. Um, so we're, we're right about 4,000. We didn't start this till March, and that end up, doesn't include December either. Um, so we're going to be closer to, to 5,000 calls on an, on an annual basis. So um, starting in January, I was going to start this earlier, but um, we've had a lot of issues, glitches to work out with the system um, as it rolled out. Uh, but starting in January, I'm going to be posting our um, daily logs. I'm going to be posting those on a website. Um, most likely, I'll start off every, every two weeks and see what, uh, see what we get for activity. Maybe I'll do it once a month, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll put every day's calls will be listed on there, just, uh, just a, an outline of the, the calls, at time, time of the call, reason for the call, and what our response was. So, so those will be posted on, uh, on our website starting in January. But like I said, we, we've got a better idea of a more accurate rep representation of what we're doing, what our officers are doing out there as far as um, police work goes. So. <clears throat> I think it's good what you're doing. Uh, I think it's on Facebook you put if there's incidents in town, whether it's uh, electricity out or accident or road closed, I think that's very helpful. I, I do applaud you for doing that. Oh, I appreciate uh, that. I, I think keep, it up, keep it up to date, Kurt. That's yeah. good. You got to do, you got to do that. You can't be a day or two late because it don't mean anything. Yeah, like no, that. it's, it, we definitely get a, we get a good response from, um, from the post like that that we put on there it gets shared a lot we've got almost two that we're approaching 2,000 uh, 2,000 followers on our on our face yeah. Facebook page which is to me is just pretty good that's a lot of people some things are we don't really know sometimes we put things on there expecting that it's going to get out to everybody and not that many people see it and some other things that we just put out there and don't expect it to go anywhere that's those are the ones that will reach 10,000 people so we it's it's tough to really say, but it, it does definitely reach reach a lot of people out there. It gets shared a lot, and we get a lot of comments. We get a lot of uh, private messages from from members of the community that use that as an avenue to communicate with us. So it's a it's a good thing. And we've also started an Instagram page because, um, as my kids have told me, Facebook is for old people. Facebook is for old people. <laughs> Instagram is for for younger people. So we've got an Instagram page now. So we put some things on there. So. Um, that's that's kind of up and up and running. And you share on the other Facebook pages and Instagram pages of the police departments in the area. Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And a lot of a lot of other agencies will will share something. You know, if we put something about a scam, you know, Happy will share stuff from our page a lot. Um, we've actually had news news sources pick up and, and share a page on their their Facebook page as well. So it it it, it does get out there. So it's okay. Thing, so. Thanks, Jim. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right, capital proposal. Frontier, I don't know how this is old business. I don't remember talking about it any time recently, but okay. We've talked uh, recently. No, we had a meeting. We had a, a, a detailed. A year ago. No, no. A year ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was wild. Okay, anyway, what do we got? I should say very old business. Yes. Dated business. Do you want to. Go over a little bit, Fred, or you yeah. want me to jump in? Uh, okay, well, what I think what we yeah. sent here is the latest uh, proposal for funding capital improvements at Frontier. And this, this came from uh, a subcommittee that I'm on representing Waitley and school committee member, I think Bob Hall is the other one from Waitley. Uh, there's eight, eight people on the subcommittee that come up with this uh, proposal here. Uh, Frontier also hired a consultant, Joe Markarian. Used to work for, uh, well, he's connected with FERCOG somehow, so they've hired him on uh, two separate occasions here to come up with all these tables. He's the one that's doing all the tables here. Uh, and we started this effort about a year ago, and, you know, we, and I think at that time that, you know, Frontier came with uh, the whole bunch, the whole list of 50 some odd items that they wanted uh, to be repaired or approved. Uh, the committee looked at that. We had field reviews of each item to make sure that was a reasonable thing that needed to be done. Uh, and the cost appeared reasonable. So what the effort was, was how can we fund these, uh, all these improvements 
over uh, a 10 year period. That's the latest we've, we've come up with a 10 year period. We looked at 15 years, we looked at five years, seven years, whatever. Uh, but the committee is kind of focused on, on a 10 year, 10 year program here. This shows the funding levels uh, each year and it's kind of tied also to improvements that are expected to be funded every year. And you can see also on here the, the costs of each of the towns. Uh, the first pay weight is 11%. That's based on the what, school formula. And that, of course, that will change every year, but it's uh, around 11%. Uh, there's, this hasn't been approved yet by the Frontier School Committee. Uh, it's hopeful it will be done in, in January. And if that gets uh, approved, then it's going to be into the, the, the budget cycle of presenting this to towns and asking asking for support. Uh, the the other item on here is is hiring somebody to manage all of this because at first Frontier was saying they could do all this, and we we questioned how could they manage all these projects. Some contracts you have to go out to get three bids to advertise and whatever. So there's an item in here, 45,000 for contingency slash oversight. Uh, that may be a full-time position or shared with the other other towns for other, other projects. Why wouldn't you just hire a contractor on that? Well. Why, why bring that, why, why add to our permanent payroll? Why, this isn't a full-time job, this is someone who, who oversees this. Right, because that, that was discussed early on. Why not hire a general contractor to do all this work? And no, I didn't say that. I, well, I said I said instead of hiring a, an employee who's gonna who's gonna monitor this on a on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you don't need to put someone on the payroll to this. You can hire a contractor, a, a consultant, who will oversee all these things, and then we aren't in the in the position of having to pay pay benefits. We're not in a position of having having someone permanently on on payroll. Uh, I hear what you're saying, Jonathan. I don't know if that's that's been finalized yet, flushed out. But that's that's the I guess the dollar figure they're they're looking for. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna hire a contractor or it's only gonna be a part-time person with no benefits or, or whatever. Uh, we haven't come to that conclusion. I, I guess the frontier is gonna have to decide on that. Uh, and, and and there's a plan in place to not. I think I heard you say to not continue to dig the hole that, 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 that the school district has dug already in terms of not paying attention to this stuff seemingly for quite a while? Well, they do pay some attention, but, but not to this. Well, I mean, there, there's a lot of money funding. here. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. it's dated stuff. Backlog of needs five, right. ten years. I mean, no. Right. Uh, this, is, this is everything that's, that's, on the, that's on the table right, right now. Uh, there's also, if you go, I don't know, six, seven pages into your tables here, there's one uh, that shows all the towns and it shows you the, the three options that were being considered here and uh, the dollar amounts each year that would uh, be required of, of each of the towns. Now, if you go into further on, there's a page like this. Waitley. There's one for each of the each of the towns. Uh, What's the total bond amount? Well, if if the, the it depends on on what funding option you look at. It's around. Uh, well, the total costs are, are three go anywhere from 3.3 .3 million up to 3.5. Uh, originally, a couple months ago, we were we were looking at. Uh, a stabilization account, a borrowing for some projects the first year or two, and then the majority of this will be done with a stabilization account every year, where there would be like 150,000 going into this account. Uh, that was a problem for some of the towns because they didn't have that much money, and they, if they wanted a debt, exclude that. Their amount, that means we would have to borrow. They could do that with borrowing, but not with a capital stabilization. 
So the uh, consultant looked at the borrowing for uh, 10 years, and you'll see a 15-year program here. Uh, costs are a whole lot different, but we're more focusing on the 10-year plan as of last week. Uh, but there's also another iteration coming in two weeks of some borrowing and some capital stabilization. Uh, the reason for that is some members of the committee don't feel it's appropriate to borrow for maintenance kind of items, replacing carpeting, painting doors, uh, fixing lights, that kind of stuff that doesn't have a 10 year life even. So they feel that we shouldn't be borrowing for them kind of improvements. Them are the things that they're looking to fund with a stabilization account, starting probably in year three or four through year 10. Has there been an analysis yeah. of from the items as to what items perhaps could be paid for out of other revenue streams? Grants, CPA, what have you? I mean, I see the track on yeah. here. Uh, the track can be funded through CPA. Right, but that's a kind of up to each town to... Uh, no, 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 it's not. If, if, the, if it's a regional yeah. school district and, and you're, you decide what your plan is, and if the plan is to try to fund X with CPA money, then that's what you go for. So it's not all on well, debt. You, you, could, you could do that. That's one, one option. Uh, we didn't consider it that way. We, we looked at each town coming up with their own share of the funds. How would they do it? We could contribute. We could use our CPA money for our share say related to the track as a what, recreational component or whatever you want to recreational component of CPA funds uh, some towns may not want that we're not proposing we didn't propose it as a CPA project to fund the track because there and I just use the track as an example I, I know but there there that was it wasn't possible, I guess, to look at that as an option in the time period we had. I, I guess I don't, I don't uh, get that because this is one of the things that, that we talked about when we first saw the list yeah. was that we have this laundry list and they're all needed items. Right. There's no debate about that. But we talked about was there creative thinking going on in terms of how to pay for some of these things. And we looked at a couple of the items and said, well, this is CPA eligible. Why not have the four, team, or the four towns do this? And that was a year ago. Okay, because we, we have to go back to, well, I guess it, that was a year ago. It, it could be, but we didn't go back to each town and ask, is there a CPA committee want to fund it? I mean, you have to get some, some uh, response from each CPA committee to know whether it's a possible project to do it that way, and we didn't do that. And, and the, other, the other thing, we didn't look at grants on here at all. That's something that's going to be done once once this is funded, is, is to apply for grants to do that. We didn't look at any of that right now. And these, these figures are the best projection today for 10 years, and they're going to be monitored every year, not just, well, by Frontier School Committee. There's proposed to be a subcommittee similar, I guess, to what we have now that's going to meet frequently during the year to monitor the progress of the funding and the projects that are going to be implemented. And if things fall out or other things added, it's up to that subcommittee to make recommendations to Frontier School Committee on it. So this isn't a hard and fast program that, that's going to have this funding every year with these projects being implemented every year. It's, it's a start. We had, to, we had to develop something to show over 10 years what was needed. Well, but I, that, okay, I, I don't understand so, that because I mean, there's there, this is a serious budget, and, right. and so numbers and assessments and analysis must have gone into it, and and so to to it, it, the the analysis has either been done or it hasn't been done in we terms of what is needed. We didn't look at the the capabilities of each town being able to fund this because uh, we. Better. But we we, vote didn't, to we didn't initially. We did. We did ask and involve finance committees in here. Our finance chair was at, and several of his members were at at a meeting. Brian was at a meeting as well. Uh, a few other finance committees were there. Uh, 
this was like a month ago uh, in our meeting, and nobody really objected to this program other than other than one one town, Deerfield, objected because they could not didn't think they could fund this every year without going into debt exclusion, and that's what what force a change in scenario here of looking at it, uh, funding more of it with debt exclusion and less with stabilization. We didn't look at whether each town could fund it and what their funding levels were, capabilities, what their uh, debt exclusion limits, uh, levy limits were. We didn't get into all that. We'd never reach agreement if we looked at all that. Correct. I think that from that meeting, I think my biggest concern, and I think the finance committee's biggest concern was the, how the plan, if it were to be funded, was to be executed. And that's what you touched on a little bit earlier, maybe getting an OPM or somebody who was going to see this thing through and coordinate it. And, right, and work with the different school committees, finance committees, TAs, I mean. Well, that, that like I said, that, there's a budget item for that. We had not discuss the detail of how that would have happened yet. And some, yeah. some, some real good lobbying skills. I mean, so, organizational management, lobbying, person-to-person -person mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be someone who knows how to hammer a nail into a wall. It's someone who no. knows right. organizational management. Right. Who knows, and who knows state procurement laws. And, right. And they're, they're aware of that. The committee is aware of the frontiers are aware that that's what, what they need to, to manage this, this program. And unfortunately, with the facilities managers, I think, scheduled to retire at the end of the year, and right. with no business manager on staff and an interim superintendent, this it's a volatile time right now in terms of the. Right, you, you got to wonder whether forty five thousand dollars is enough, by the way, for someone who really knows what they're doing. Over ten years? No. Uh, is it forty five a year? or Forty five over ten years? Oh, so uh, yeah. uh, forty five per year over per, ten years. Okay. Over ten years, right? I, yeah. You could argue it's a, little, a, a bigger nut than $45,000. That may change. Uh, the first three or four years where most of the projects will be done, maybe higher than 45 and then drop off after that. But uh, they just picked a, yeah. a number they thought would be reasonable to Well, I, I would certainly encourage so, you to be a contractor as opposed to a full-time employee because the, the person also needs some autonomy. Yeah. Okay. But the, the looking, you know, kind of the, the, the bottom line on, on the, the page with the three scenarios so far, you know, Whaley share ranges from, well, you look at the average from 20, the low is, well, we're not going with a 15 year, but really a 10 year plan is 37,495 every year. It would be Whaley's uh, share. And that's, that's with uh, no stabilization. That's with all borrowing. So, but. And if you do some borrowing, you're you're going to be you're going to be less than that. That's not that needs to be worked out yet. That's the table they're working on. So what happens in years 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15? The way that that was just for the 15-year plan to right. show that scenario. The rest, but the other others would would end. Then we'd be into a new program. Year 10. I mean. Maintenance is not going to go away. At this no, point. that's sort of my point. Rather than ignoring it, like it seems like it's been ignored for the last X number of years, making sure that once we catch up, or we catch up at the no. same time, we're not we're, we're 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 making sure we don't put band aids on it. That we're actually being proactive about this. I know, but we we had a we had to stop somewhere. And they they figured ten years was was what was reasonable to implement all these needs that they they identified today. And there's there's also a list here that talks about deferred deferred maintenance, deferred needs that are going to happen in, in the latter years because we don't know today for sure, but they're in the program here. Uh, deferred maintenance repairs, general fund. They're talking, you know, you've got half a million dollars of that, starting probably most of them in in uh, year three or four and going on. Uh, yeah, after year 10, nobody knows you could start all over again or... Well, it better not be playing catch-up is my point. No, the, the, the plan is to implement all of these major projects within the 10 years. Okay. All right. This is good. Thank you, Fred. Probably a good time to take a recess. Yeah. Let's take a recess before town meeting.
Um, so, we need a motion. A motion to, uh, can I hear a motion to adjourn and we will be going yeah. back into session after town meeting? I so moved. Second. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me? Aye. Uh, we are temporarily adjourned. Uh, call them, call me. Continuance yeah, call them. to uh, order. Um, new business, our item five on the agenda, um, and we came in at 704. Um, discuss and vote on annual license renewals for calendar year 2019. Uh, we have a bunch of things alcohol, entertainment, autom autom automatic amusement devices, etc. So, Brian? Yeah. So, Amy has those licenses over there. Do we have them by category? Yes. Okay. Which one are we doing first? Um, Half the list, the alcohol license. Alcohol licenses. So you have a list here, here that they put together, and we also have a spreadsheet. Where? It should be in your packet. Uh, later in the packet? Uh, I need that. Yeah. License holders, liquor, automatic. Okay. One sheet, correct? Yes. Yep. So for alcohol licenses, general on premise yep. all alcohol license. Uh, Demetrios Constantopoulos. DBA Castaways, we have in holder all alcoholic beverages, Wait We In, Kevin Clock. We have, I'll do the on premise one, we have the Waitley NEC Opco at the Waitley Diner for retail on premise wine malt. We have retail package goods store all alcohol muffins. And we have retail package goods store wine malt Circle K. Those are our, our, our alcohol license renewals for fiscal year 29 uh fiscal year for calendar year 2019. okay i'm going to just say what i said at a previous meeting within the last month that um i am continuously seeing and, and again it's po very possible that the new owners of the of the diner are unaware i don't think they are of of, of this rule but the alcohol license was granted um, based upon trucks following the traffic pattern that we laid out, um, there's a very clear sign on the on the entrance exit closest to the diner, between the diner and the gas station, um, that trucks are not supposed to exit from that pathway, yep. and it is happening quite frequently. So I have no problem doing this, but. They need to be aware that they need to figure out how to hold trucks to that traffic pattern. And the sign is still there. It's it, that that's my only yeah. issue. So I pulled I went back for the meeting minutes from I think it was twenty thirteen when the alcohol license was first issued by this board. And it seemed to be and you're correct, it seemed to be the alcohol license um, was approved subject to them coming back to the select board with a with essentially a traffic plan. Right, which, which they did. Which they did. Um, but that that traffic plan, so so this is a long way to say I think you're right. I don't think any Siapco, the new owner, has any idea because the traffic plan and anything are not part of the conditions on the license. So I don't know if it's worth um, having, asking them to come in or um, and just sending them a letter, making them aware. I mean, the yeah. signs are there, so they are they they're still there. They, they're still there, so they must be aware. Oh, the signs here are for a reason. For right. The, for the cars, vehicles, the trucks. I don't know because they're working there. So it, just a, a letter saying you, you need to adhere and you need to figure out how to get your truck drivers who use the facility to adhere to the the track pattern because that's that was the condition that the alcohol license was was granted and and I I I certainly want to see them continue with that opportunity to sell alcohol but we need that track in my opinion and Joyce you were on the board then I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure yeah I what I what I sort of interpreted uh, Brian as saying is that basically we didn't write that condition into the license right and maybe we should well, I, I guess my and I don't and I don't know that we can do it on real short notice right but um, 
we should figure out what's the what's the right process to use to get that done. I think, um, and I don't know what the right process is. If it, it sounds like it, it's going to mean a face-to-face -face meeting um, before the, uh, this license gets signed, or maybe uh, you know, give them give them a one-month license and you know, get till the end of January or whatever. Um, but I, I, I think it sounds like. You know that we we probably dropped the ball on that without for not getting them, them written into the license. Uh, I do remember that whole discussion, and they were and those are definitely conditions. But um, you know when they're not in writing, I think that's maybe the problem. Right. I think I think if I think if we brought this to the new owners, this would be brand new to them. Right. And and I'm, that's what I'm assuming. So I just want to make sure that we do it. In a, in a friendly way so that they just take care of it and figure it out and you know I don't think it's a, a, a big deal it's just that we need to make sure that it's happening I guess my, my concern about this is do we have authority to do that because that's a state highway we're controlling access if we put signs up you're saying you're controlling access to a state highway what does the state say it's their road and the signs are on the state right away that are there now and the town is, is controlling how traffic gets on the state highway without even involving the state on this. I, I, I don't know, I, I really question why we need to do that. And if there's a legal, if something, uh, accident happens and there's a liability issue, the state's gonna wipe their hands because they had no, no involvement in it. So well, I think we're allowed to, on licenses, uh, ask questions and make conditions if they're related to public safety, and that includes traffic. So yeah, I think it is something, and they don't say you can do this if it's only your own road or if it's just not a state road or something like that. So that, I'm pretty sure we actually, we can. Well, I think uh, there's, there's, a, there's language in our bylaw somewhere that says anytime you, you have access to a state highway you need to involve the the state dot but we didn't do that with the castaways did we well we're not They're changing access so well. no, you're not changing access um and and what was uh inside the parking lot for safety reasons i guess there was a clear I, to me a clear I understanding the people there who the property can tell people which place they can go in and which place they can go out Okay, well, that should be the property owner. But we asking them to do it as a condition of the license is also fair game. Right. Otherwise, we just don't have to approve the license. I, I think us placing, like I said, control, to access, control access to a state highway without involving the state. If we want to do this, I think you need to inform the state that we're doing this. State I gives think access. A way to make sure it doesn't get done. The state gives access to the diner. They have access control of that roadway. Now, I I don't think it, we're going to agree on this tonight, Fred. Well, but I, I I just I, can we agree on a, on sending them a, a letter at, in the in the meantime, send them a letter to make them aware of what we believe the yeah. conditions are. If you can tell them what the conditions are, I'm fine, but as far as, uh, I, I don't know, I guess, I don't want to say enforcement, but putting up signs and, and where to put them and all that, I, I guess that should be up to them, how they want to control that. Well, the, but, then, but then, if they don't, we have the ability to say, you know what, we don't feel like offering an alcohol license. That's no. completely within our juris jurisdiction. Right, well, then they can put signs, I guess, up, but... I mean, this was a friendly be, thing, this wasn't a... They need to be aware the signs are actually already up, Fred. Right? Well, some are, some are. No, the signs, the signs are the same signs that have always been there. It says, entrance only, do not exit. And there are signs along the, whatever you want to call it, the southbound pathway that exits out of the castaway property. I mean, the, I'm sorry, the... the Diner property, a yeah. hundred feet down, 150 feet down the road on 510. So it, 
out. I have no problem making this, uh, just sending a letter saying, hey, we've approved your license, but we would like to bring this to your attention. How can we work together to proceed? You okay with that choice? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a reasonable way to, to get the ball rolling. Okay, so should we sign these then? So we're not asking them to do anything, just to ask how they want to proceed at this point. Okay. I think we want to make them aware of what those, well, okay. what was, yeah. what was voted on in and, 2013. And, and we have the right to pull a license and anything we want, isn't it? Don't we? As long as you provide notice and opportunity to be heard. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you want all of them or just the liquor like alcohol licenses? Uh, I, I'm fine with them all. Automatic commute, I'm gonna just run through them. Yeah, what is that? Them. I don't even know what that is. Those are juke those are for jukeboxes. <laughs> Why aren't they called jukeboxes? I don't know. Common vict so common victuallers, um, Waitley Inn, Muffins, Waitley Diner, Northampton Co-op Auction Barn, Tom's Long Dog and Grill. Waitley Rec Department. I'm still not convinced that that's needed, but. I didn't even know we had it until just two days ago, so. I, I checked with our surrounding communities and they don't issue common victuallers to either the school or their. Uh, um, what does it allow us to do? What does it what allow the Waitley Rec community to do? Um, prepare and serve food for consumption on the property. And what happens if we don't have that license? The select board will go after you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're the enforcement. Well, agents. but you know why other towns don't is because other towns don't have a built-in kitchen on their property, so it does make sense. But they don't do it for their schools. But the school doesn't sell it does. food to outside groups. That's not a very nice thing to say, John. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't say anything mean. Did you place? That's something that's, that needs to warrant some investigation. Historically, they have not been asked to get a common picture. Our preliminary investigation shows some debate over, over whether it was a farm stand or um, a restaurant or retail. So it may take a little bit more digging for that. Um, Waitley Inn as an in-holders uh, in license. Um, uh, Dimitros Constantopoulos Castaways Entertainment License. Um, class 1 licenses, Orchard Trailers, Waitley Vehicle Service, Class 2 licenses, Zanonis, and One Call Does It All. I would just ask that any motion for approval, right? We, do we get the surety bonds for either of the one call that's about what doing? And any motion for class two licenses be contingent on the receipt by the town of uh, the required $25,000 surety bond for the sale of used cars. That's it. That's it, uh, Zanonis? Zanonis and one call does it all. Where's that? That's State Road. And, and doesn't the, uh, the storage facility sell cars too? That's Whaley Vehicle Sales. He has, a, he used to have a purple Oh, you got that on here, okay, Whaley okay. Vehicle Sales. Okay. So is that a motion or how does that work, Brian? Well, why don't, why don't we do a motion for everything except, why don't we do motions for each category and vote on I think that would be cleaner. Okay, I'd make a motion to uh, sign alcohol licenses as as stated. Um, not a, a it's not contingent, but we will be sending uh, a letter of uh, con for conversation to the diner. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Brad. Aye. Joyce. 
Aye. Me, aye. Uh, make a motion to uh, have the board accept and sign all entertainment licenses as is. Do I hear a second? Oh, oh sure, second. Sorry. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, aye. Make a motion to for the board to accept and sign the automatic amusement devices. Yeah, oh yeah. Do I hear a second? Yeah. Second. Oh, I second. Sorry. All of, that's all right. All those in favor, Fred? <laughs> aye. Me, aye. Joyce? Aye. Does, does this ask on uh, entertainment? Uh, Waitley Inn doesn't have entertainment. They do not have an entertainment no. license. And, and what about the other the other place uh, on State Road, the vaping shop? Do they qualify for any of these here? No. Do they don't need to do anything? Not for any of these categories. No. Not for these categories. Okay. Um, make a motion to uh, for the board to accept and sign common Vixler licenses as stated. Second. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, aye. Make a motion to, for the board to accept and sign the in-holder licenses as currently exist. Uh, second. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, aye. Make a motion to accept and sign the class one and class two secondhand motor vehicle sales with the um, contingency that we receive the $25,000 surety bond uh, for class two that we have yet to receive. Yeah. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, aye. Uh, Control Council. Um, we have two new folks who are willing to join the Cultural Council. And one is, and I apologize because I'm not going to get this name right, but Rianne Vijay and this one I know, George Reynolds, are interested in joining the Cultural Council. Do I hear a motion? I move that we uh, appoint both of those people to the Cultural Council. Second. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, aye. Capital improvement, Brian? So we're trying to um, make sure we have active members on the capital improvement uh, planning committee so when we start to do a little bit, hopefully a little bit more in depth capital planning over the next year. Um, we'll have uh, full participation and well, one of the spots um, that we needed to fill was the um, appointed board member by the town bylaw um, should be appointed board member and the appointed board voted as last meeting to um, recommend Nicholas Jones to be appointed to the CIPC. Okay. And, he ex and, um, and he's willing, of course. Your motion? I move that we appoint uh, him to the uh, uh, capital improvement committee. Who's him? Nicholas Jones. Thank you. Second, all those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, aye. Uh, school sprinkler. I wish I had better news, but. Um, we don't have a uh, contract to award tonight. Why not? Because um, we received three price quotes to do the work, and they were all they all came in over the available funds. So I'm going to need to talk with Bob Lesko in the school to see what they want to do. If they want to seek additional funds, or they want to try to rebid the project to get the price lower. Um, the other issue we have is. 
without going into too much detail about procurement law, it, if, if the project's going to cost over $50,000, which all of these bids were, the lowest one was um, $55,000 and some change, it needs to be bid through a, a different process with sealed bids, advertising in the newspaper, um, advertising on the website, and it's, it's a little bit more involved in the process. So I'll be talking to Bob in the next in the next day probably to see how we want to um, address this. But those bids were received today, so okay. I haven't had a chance to connect with him yet. So we'll just pass on that. Yep. Um, did, did all these bids you may have told me this, include the nitrogen generator? No. No, they don't include the nitrogen. They do not include the nitrogen. And I think that's another twenty thousand. It could, it could be. Yeah. It, that, that, would, that will be treated if the school wants to submit it as a separate capital item. Okay. Uh, FCC letter. Hey, Joyce. Hey. <laughs> um, I don't know uh, how much you've been reading in the papers. There was uh, Chris Collins wrote a column. Uh, about this, and I sent in a letter to the editor about it as well. Um, but uh, in our franchise agreement, there's basically two things that uh, we negotiate for with Comcast, and that is the the actual channels, the fact that we have, you know, basically three channels under our control in in town. Um, is one of the things that that uh, we negotiate for from Comcast. Remember, years and years ago, we only had the one channel and we negotiated up to, to three now. Um, and the other thing we negotiate for is for uh, actual dollars, um, for equipment grants and for the, the kind of the quarterly payments, so to speak, the uh, percentage of the uh, revenue they make from the customers in our town. Um, this, there's a, uh, in, in, as you know, in Washington, there are, are lots of lobbyists and the communications industry is, is no different. Um, they have about, I don't know, probably 10 lobbyists per member of Congress. Um, there's, I think, one or two perhaps lobbyists for the cable access industry for the entire government. So just <laughs> so you know that the people um, who contacted Chris, the one that to help get some support out there um, for the FCC to, to not change the rule. They have a rule now where the uh, companies need to, you have to negotiate for both of those things. And they're uh, thinking of changing the rule so that um, Comcast can, could basically say, well, those three channels are worth you know X million dollars and I'm going to subtract that from whatever money it is that we promised to give you. So essentially canceling out uh, you know, any, any good we would get out of a, a, a contract, uh, you know, it would basically it would kill FCAT for sure because we'd have no money to run anything. Um, there'd be you know, no more um, of all the great programming they do at FCAT. Um, and so this, this would kill public access in small towns like ours. So the, uh, there's a letter there. Um, it's very similar to one that Sunderland has already signed and, and submitted to the FCC for comments. The comment period ends on the 15th. Is that right, Brian? Yeah. Um, so uh, we, you know, this is a, a chance to, um, you know, to make our voice heard and maybe make a difference uh, about this rule being put into place or not hopefully being put into place um i i, I think it's great my question and i think it's a no-brainer yeah my, my question for you joyce is that do we know the the appointee makeup of the fcc currently no i don't personally know though. well i guess the people who, who we need to send it to that are very clear Right, but we should, we should, I'm just saying we should copy Congressman McGovern's office and Senator Markey and Senator Warren um, to oh, make sure. Okay. Yeah, that, that's just because, 
they won't have any, uh, you know, the Republican appointees may not care, but at least the Democratic appointees would say, oh, okay, they, they, they've, you know, they, they have the, the people in, in, in the party that appointed me on board with this. Okay. I think that's a great idea. To CC our, all of our federal representatives. Anything else? Any comments, Fred? No. It's fine. So is this what we signed? Is this the official one? Or, yeah. I guess, yeah. I just wanted to twice it. First, thanks for doing that. I, I spent about 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it came up kind of quickly, but because uh, um, I already understood the, the issues and what was going on, and that was inside uh, of the You got to see. Yeah, it was kind, it's kind of a dense issue. Yeah. We're going to have to get well, into it quickly, and it was difficult. That's fine. Without all the background. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think the state legislators are going Any idea when we right. expect a decision okay. on this, Joyce? Or to hear back? Well, it's the FCC, so it probably takes some time. <laughs> um, and that's, uh, uh, so it's always a little tricky. Uh, but uh, I would assume within the year, if, I mean, given the amount of lobbyists we are working against, uh, yeah. they'll be pushing and pushing to get this done. And there are really only four members of the FCC right now, making it painfully easy to have a split vote. I don't. I, I don't know. Well, I, I'm just. I, I see the, four names these here. These are the so. people. Yeah, these are the people who we were. Who uh, the the one the, you know the people in the cable access community who know of, you know the procedure. That's who they said you have to send letters okay. to. Okay. Okay. All right, good, good, good. Um, town holiday schedule. Yes. So, so it happens that um, this year both um, Christmas Eve day and New Year's Day fall on Mondays with Tuesdays holidays. And I've received questions from employees as to whether Monday is a, so Christmas Eve day is a paid off holiday or not. And according to our personnel policy, it is not. Um, but that can be changed um, with a vote of the select board. So I was, I promised that I would bring it to your attention. I would make a motion that everybody except for Amy gets Monday off. What? Somebody has to be here. Huh? I am serious. <laughs> she can work from home. I can she work can see the building. <laughs> Um, I, I think we should close on Monday personally. I just don't see any. This is one of the things where, you know, we want to be good to our employees. That, that's me. I know, and I would, and I would cut out at noon on Monday on the 30th or the 31st. I mean, what have you done in the past? This has come up every what seven I years. Call. I, I, maybe I don't. I don't. I honestly don't recall. But you know, it just it, and and, it, and we didn't do this when when the holiday fell on a on a on a Tuesday in the past. Then shame on us. I mean, I I know I would always give employees that worked for me in the private sector the the, the, the day off. Day before, okay. You're also saying what? Well, I, I, before. I'm less, in, I'm less threatened about this one. But on New Year's, on New Year's Eve, I think in the past we've done three o'clock or you know, what, 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 what are you suggesting that? I think we should give something on New Year's Eve as well, personally. I mean, these are the little things that we can do to hopefully make our employees glad that they work for the town of Waitley. They may not anyway, I don't know, but. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying. So it, at some point it's gonna become a precedent that you know, every, every year then, uh, no matter what day, New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve uh, fall on, then it's, it, it's going to become expected. Okay, that's 
and I, and I don't know how much resentment there might be among people that oh these people have more time off than I do. I I, I think that might be uh, a little petty, but we just have to expect that that might come up. Yeah, I, I get that, but I'm not sure I would have the same, and I, I don't know this, but I don't think I would necessarily would have the same feeling if Christmas were on a Wednesday, because I know we wouldn't give the Monday and the Tuesday off, but it's just, with the Monday, it, 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 it's sort of like, and I don't mean to pick on the schools, but I will, it's sort of like when, when you, <laughs> you, you know, you, you, you start school on a Thursday and then you take the Friday off. <laughs> well, it's just the Thursday's a waste of a day. You know, I, I just don't believe in waste of a day. If we're not going to be productive, don't, you know, it's just people are going to be in the Christmas spirit. They're going to be looking forward to getting home to their families or traveling or what have you. So it, 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 it's just not fair if, if someone has to travel to, I don't know where, to, to visit their parents. Um, well, there, there is this thing called paid time off that people do have. I, I and I get that there is vacation, and some some would argue that that's what you should use it for. What what is a day after Thanksgiving? Is that a holiday or not? So the personnel policy is a paid off holiday. Okay. I'm I'm more than happy to have people yell at me if they think this is a bad idea around town. But well, I, I, I guess I, I've, I don't know if this is relevant that much or not, but I've already in the past either a Friday or, or a Monday. Uh, it should be a day off be, because of uh, you got to heat the building and, and all that, so rather than heat it, and I don't know how much more you're talking for a day of heat for the building, they, you save a few dollars that way, so you give everybody the day off. Oh, there's only one lump of coal, I'm sure. Yeah, so, I mean, but in, in big organizations, that, that is a, a difference, utilities for one day. Uh, here, maybe not, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think, well, I, half, that half a day on, on New Year's Eve, and, and maybe this year, since Christmas is on a, is on a Tuesday, give them all of Monday off. Just this year, yeah, it's not present. And, so and and we'll decide next year what happens. Are you real? Are you real concerned about precedent, Joyce? Or are you okay with that? I think I'm okay with that. So, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. To close Waitley offices on Monday, December twenty fourth. Um, and on Monday, December 31st, close the offices at 12 noon. And anyone who wants to take that whole day off would need to adhere to the weekly paid time off policy. Okay, second. I second that motion. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me? Aye. So this is for all town employees, right? Yes. Yeah. Again, except. Well, yeah, that goes without saying. Full time employees, right? Right. <laughs> Wait, but that means we're still working on Christmas, though, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Trade one for the other. Good. Um, all right. Time ministry updates. I got a bunch for you this time. I know you want to stick around. Mm -hmm. Um. Start with the fun ones. So, if people don't know, uh, Candace, the library director, has departed to uh, a library directly to the north of us. Um, so, um, Cindy is has been appointed by the library trustees as the interim library director, and they'll be posting the position shortly uh, to replace Candace. How long was she here for? Uh, two years, maybe. Two years. Um, okay. So we had our first um, heavy usage of the uh, the town hall building on December second. That was for the library craft fair, and I'm told it went very well. And the the library netted about, or the front of the library netted up 
about $1,200 for library programming. Um, they thought the, the town hall worked really well, and they want to come back next year to do it. Um, so it was, uh, I wasn't able to make it, but the folks who were there said it worked out pretty well. Yeah, that heard it was great. Yeah, it was, great. Yeah, it was good. They uh, filled the hole upstairs. I guess maybe they look at a better room arrangement, but as far as vendors and tables, the whole upstairs was full and a lot of people there during the day coming and going, so. Speaking of the town hall, we received a, a letter from the, the Friends of Town Hall, and I, I guess from the Historical Society, because they're the, the fiscal agent. Um, it was a letter officially donating the, uh, the AV equipment that's been installed in the, in the lower meeting room, so that's the flat panel display and the equipment that um, had to go with that. Uh, so I guess I would recommend that we should probably send them a thank you letter. Um, and they anticipate that the, the rest of the AV equipment up in the auditorium will be installed by the end of the year. Um, I don't know if we send two letters or we just wait and send one letter, um, or if we just send one letter for both of them. Uh, both items, but whatever you think is best, I would, uh, I would say. They want me to. That will come from the chairperson. Right. Sound good. Okay. Um, update on the generator, the backup generator for the elementary school. Um, so the concrete pad has been poured. The generator's on site. The underground conduit's been dug and installed, and we're just waiting for the electrician to connect the generator to the building and test it. And we should be good to go um, and again the, the school is the town's emergency uh, emergency shelter if anything were to happen so now we will have power um, if we need it at that building um, to keep the heat on and uh, the cook if something terrible were to ever happen have we paid for the generator yes Um, there's some ongoing work with, uh, if you recall, there's an ad hoc committee that's working um, to come up with some conceptual designs for the Veterans Monument that's in the center of town adjacent to the town hall. Uh, you might recall that uh, they got in touch with the Conway School of Landscape Design and it was one of their students' um, fall projects. Um, so some preliminary designs, some preliminary conceptual designs have, have been um, prepared and um, they've been presented to the committee. Um, and I think those conceptual designs will be um, finalized probably by the end of the month or early January. And I'll work with the committee to uh, try to get some public feedback as to which ones they might want to uh, pursue. Those are conceptual designs, so I don't think they're going to have any costs attached. Okay, a comment I, I'd make, uh, I think I've talked to some of the veterans on it, is, is coming up somehow a, a way of preventing people from parking right in front of the monument. I mean, this was even, I came through there, I think it was Saturday evening or Friday evening, where the end was packed. There was vehicles within five feet of the monument, all over the grass and whatever. And I guess I've said this to their committee, their architect needs to come up, either put a curbing gutter or benches or, or something to keep vehicles from parking on the, say, on the monument, really. Yeah. Especially if they move it further yeah. into, the, into the front. Right, if you move There'd it. Be a lot more parking space. Move it back, you have more place to park, and, and these people aren't afraid to go on a lawn and whatever. <laughs> as long as they don't hit an obstruction, I guess, but. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we'll recall that the Blue School closing was pushed back till um, December 31st. So, as far as I know, that's still scheduled for that to happen. I, I've, I've been on some emails that it appears that Frontier appears to be moving stuff out. Um, so hopefully that will happen in time. Um, and, and related to that, we the board previously had discussions about 
what to do with a replacement field for that, but that seems to seems to have been resolved, right? Well, um, well, or you know, it certainly thoughts? won't be resolved for this coming year because it, it, we've we've submitted a CPA application, um, but obviously CPA money doesn't become available until July first, based upon the town meeting of, of April slash May. Right. right. Um, so we may still have an issue. Um, with this coming season, depending upon what the construction cycle is for for the new owner. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that I can, once the closing happens, um, can can have a conversation with them about how we make this work. But, you know, it, it, that's going to be in his court. Yeah. His original thought was that it would be a winter project. Obviously, that's not, right. not happening. And, and I met with him and Don Sluter since then once to talk about what, if anything, needs to be done with, with, with zoning um, for that property. And he was supposed to get back to me as to his ideas and what might be issues for him. And I, I have not heard back yet. Um, so it's, I think it's still ways, ways out before something happens there. But we'll just have to see. Um, capital project requests um, are due back this Friday, so I'd appreciate those um, from department heads and boards and committees. Um, you guys have invitations to the Yankee Candle um, event where they donate to our, uh, this year it will be to our police department. Each year they donate, make donations to the, the police department and the fire department and they alternate years, so that'll be, this year will be the police department. Um, Poplar Hill Road, that seems to be a long, drawn out um, issue, but. Uh, I was hoping it was resolved. No. Well, Keith and I are going to are meeting with uh, a man by the name of Charlie Conant from Smith College. Um, and they're supposed to have some revised plans as to how um, that issue could be resolved in terms of ownership of the right of way and who owns what with. Uh, the, the property owner um, next door. Um, so hopefully we'll get some we'll get some clear answers on that. And I I would expect if if we do come to some resolution, it would probably be a um, an item for the annual town meeting in April. Um, we have new Wi-Fi in this room. I don't know if you guys have tried to log on. No. New Wi-Fi. We have a new router and firewall in the back. So does that mean we're live? Nope, that's the next thing. Um, so Amy finally got FCAT and Comcast in the same room, which was a feat. Um, we met. You get to go home an hour early on Christmas. <laughs> we met at the end of November, and everybody said stuff that I did not understand about head ends and lighting things up and dark things. I, I, it was totally out of mind. Right. My, uh, I should have been there. <laughs> you should have. But um, we ended up coming from here, going over to the center school, taking equipment that was in the center school basement here. Um, and I believe Channel 15 is still live. Um, so uh, they did some stuff. And long story short, um, it seems like we just need and this was an email we got from Chris, Chris Collins today, is that we just need to buy a new camera um, that would probably stay um, in this building and we would be able to go live. So it, it seemed like much of the work that had needed to be done had already been done before that representative at Comcast who Chris was working with left and then it just sort of stayed idle for a little while. Um, but they didn't appear to do much installation or, or anything. In fact, I don't think they really did anything. Um, but hopefully we'll be going live soon. Yeah, we should look at, um, uh, for a source of money for that camera. Before uh, FCAT was formed, um, and the towns each kind of did their own uh, uh, cable, there was a period of time where we were building up some funds. Um, I don't know 
um, if any of those are still around. It was from the time when Lynn was town administrator, so she may know um, if there's any money in there that we could put towards the camera. Okay. That's, that's different than the PEG access capital funds? Um, it would be, um, yeah, I think it, would, it might have that name. Okay. Why um, wouldn't but we just take it from what Comcast gives us? That's that, that's that fund. That's, that's the PEG yeah, access capital yeah. fund. We probably have between forty and fifty thousand dollars in that account. Right. And it keeps it keeps yeah. accruing, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the that's one of the fees that Joyce was talking about that they want to make go away, right? Uh, well, they want us to use that to pay them for having the the uh, access to their channel. Oh, so they would yeah. pay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they would, so, so essentially, they, they, you know, they, they would give it to us, but then they would bill us for it. So we'd be like ESPN. Right. They want to put us on the same level as ESPN, which provides so much local sports. You know, they're, they're down at Frontier coverage games, just like FCAT, right? <laughs> Don't get me started. It's too late. So what, what are we talking the price of a camera? Then? I, I, Joyce might know. It would depend know. on what how you know if we want to put a built-in camera in or if we want one that someone from fcat comes you know uh, fit whatever amount of time early and sets up like the one they have right now um, maybe that's something that uh, since i'm not going to be all that much longer here i can take up when i get back deal voice activated <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's left at the school brian center school anything I'll... um some there is some electronic equipment down there i don't know what it does or who does it belong to i believe it belongs to have cap i'll um, uh, put that on my plate then when i get back to yeah we should take a field trip there and it's operator working i i really don't know no, no, we'd okay. have we'd have to take a look um and <laughs> So one of the things that you have to, you guys have to promise not to laugh, but um, we were doing a, a regional, um, FERCOG's doing this regional IT assessment and they're paying for it. So we had a, one of their consultants come and he did a speed test on what we have for internet here. And it is, it is laughable um, what we have through the Mass Broadband Institute. And I really think that we should go to Comcast. Um, we should switch Comcast. So we have MBI or Axia, which I'm not sure if they're still even responsible for the Mass Broadband Institute network. But um, we do speed tests, and we get around three megabytes per second um, at here. And then I, I realized when we were over at the library, they're also still on the MBI network. and. We're on a plan right now. We get five. We get five megabytes per second down, and we get five megabytes per second up, and we pay around one hundred twenty dollars a month, where you can switch over to Comcast, and you can get. I think it's somewhere. It's probably around fifty megabytes per second for probably. I, don't, I think it's around ninety dollars. Um, so we're paying more for less, and we're even starting to have some connect. Lynn's actually starting to have some connectivity problems with connecting to the state computers. Um, I thought that was supposed to be like a thousand megabits per second. The MB. Uh, you pay for what you get. Uh, oh, capable of. Oh, so we're being cheap. Or they're being outrageously expensive. Or they're being outrageously I mean, expensive. Uh, we, it, I have uh, 250 megabits per second. And how much do you pay? I pay 90 something dollars. Yep. We are laughably slow. Yeah. All right, well, these are the kinds um, of things that I think we should just do. Yeah, we should also look into the uh, Comcast. They're supposed to give that to the library for free. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Why, why is that choice? Um, I think that's part of the Massachusetts law, but I don't, I don't have to look into it. Okay. okay. But, but Brian, seriously, these are the kinds of things you should just do on your own. We, we, you don't need good. to. I don't think you should come to have to come to the board for these kinds of administrative nuances. Should we take a vote on this? <laughs> give, them a, give them a dollar amount. 
fifty grand. Well, if he's going to save money. Hey, oh, I'm all for it. Yeah, I mean, jeez. You're preaching to the choir here. Okay. All right. Um, all right. I'll do one more. I'm going to let Jonathan go home. Um, Jim Ross from the Library of Trustees came to me uh, last week or the week before. The trustees are starting to look at um, or want to start the process of, of making the downstairs of the library accessible to all people. Yep. Um, so I think we'll likely see some discussions and costs associated with that. Um, right now, only the top floor is accessible and the restrooms are on the bottom floor. So there's no accessible restrooms for the patrons that need it without going down a flight of stairs. So. Yeah, I don't think the restrooms are... No, the restrooms, so the restrooms would also need to get renovated as well for that building to be um, handicap accessible, fully handicap accessible. Okay. Is that it? We'll, we'll, we'll say that's it for now. Till next time. Motion to adjourn. The, well, the question, so are we meeting... Second. So we're meeting January 9th. Is that our next meeting? Yeah. Nobody wants to meet the last week in December. Joyce will be back. I'll be back, yeah. I may not be around. Okay, I, I don't know that there's a, a, a need for us to meet at this point. I'm just look here, Jim. What, what, December 9th? What, 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 what are we talking about? Right, the last. Well, if we say it on the Wednesday, it'll be the day after Christmas. Yeah. But I don't, I don't foresee a need. Yep, yeah, okay, January 9th. Okay, great. Motion to adjourn. That's second. We're done. Sorry.